Hey friend, welcome to my channel, Cranial Loop Mental Gems. This channel is dedicated to leveling up in all areas of your life. So let us learn together, read together, but most importantly, grow together. Today is a book club for Becoming Bulletproof by Evie Pomporas. A little background on who Evie Pomporas is. Evie Pomporas is a former Secret Service special agent on the protective details for former presidents uh, Barack Obama, George Bush, William J. Clinton, and George H. Bush. She received the United States Secret Service Service Medal of Valor Award for her heroism on 9-11, which she on Audible gave that whole spill on just how the day was so it was very gut-wrenching to hear her intro on audible she had her husband do like be part of the audible recording which was really really good so what is this book about this book is all about how to protect yourself okay and this is not sponsored or anything but y'all know i like to give y'all put y'all on game for stuff there's this app called insta read that i downloaded a while back where they give you really good summaries of the books it's kind of like it takes the notes for me i read the book but it takes the notes for me so i don't have to write down the notes and then i just you know come here and do that which helps me a lot versus me writing but it'll do that for you if you're a student and you have to read a book for your class or whatever and you can't afford it listen i wish i had this app when i was in college i will be using them on this app courtesy of that so i'll give them a shout out because i'm using them this book is all about how to protect yourself how to read people influence situations and live fearlessly and it does live up to the expectations it really really does so let's start with insights for chapter one to two the first point is the media sensationalizes things that are unlikely to kill us so we fear them more than things that are likely to kill us she spoke about that how the media likes to promote things like shark deaths for example you know how rare it is for people to die from sharks <laughs> or plane crashes how rare that that happens you're more likely to die in a car accident than a plane crash or a car accident than a shark attack but because they happen so rarely the media focuses on it because it makes a good story and then now you have an irrational fear of sharks and you avoid the beaches or you have an irrational fear of airplanes so you avoid ever taking any trips or going in the air because they take the few stories that happen and they sensationalize it and then we build fear and a lot of us are crippled by fear because of the media and those headlines and this is what she was was talking about that they take things they sensationalize it and then we have an irrational fear and anxiety number two is when you feel afraid your body feels that it is in danger your brain sends a signal to your body to react in one or three ways fight flee or freeze I love how she spoke about once you learn which one you more are like if you're more of a fight then you can benefit in learning how to you know chill a little bit if you're more of a freeze then you can learn how to be calm under pressure to react and if you're not a fight at all most likely even outside of protecting yourself if you're not a fight at all you're probably going to get used uh, criminals are going to see that take advantage of you you got to have some tough in you you know and if you're one that doesn't fight you flee you need to learn how to get some fight in you okay <laughs> so how do you determine which one you are it's fight means combating the danger flight is deeming the danger to be too great for you to take on so you try to escape it freeze is being so overwhelmed by a perceived threat that you can't respond like a deer in headlights so based on on that comment below which one are you the next point that i like from chapters one or two is remember that when you go through a hard time you get stronger it's the struggle that makes you the best version of yourself it's choosing to face a challenge instead of fleeing from it the will to endure whatever life throws at you and keep going regardless of obstacles i love the quote and i oh i can't remember i don't i don't know if it was del carnegie probably not that stated this quote that let's not ask for life to be easier but ask instead for us to be stronger and the only way we become stronger is through obstacles and overcoming them okay life will have its obstacles it will never be easy after every mountain is another mountain that's the saying they say in haiti so instead of praying that there's no mountains just pray that you're a better climber you're more resilient and you know how to overcome each mountain that comes towards you and this is what i get from this there will always be situations where you will either have to fight flee or freeze but 
that's what makes you stronger. So face them head on instead of running from them. So from chapters three to four, here's the key points. Number one, she talks about being mentally strong, saying your mental shield is like a suit of armor. It allows you to be bold, brave, and daring without fear of criticism or denigration. It's something you have the power to create for yourself. So what she gave an example is for my workout junkies, if you're working out, they, if you're a bodybuilder, for instance, you may start off with five pounds, but you know you're never really gonna grow in strength training if you don't gradually add more weight <laughs> to your body you're never really going to get to that point if you started with five pounds and then 10 years later you're still using five pound weights your body is never going to really grow to its full potential so this is what she said with her experience in the field going through classes as a police officer she always wanted to fight the biggest toughest dude to apply herself there was a, a lot of great examples she also said putting yourself in stressful situations in order to become stronger and not avoiding them like putting yourself in her case it was fighting the biggest toughest dude there helping them to help me train so that I can get bigger even when she was bruised even when she was being tossed around it helped her to become more resilient more strong so you instead of avoiding stressors try to put yourself in, in some stress situations that's what's gonna help you to build and oftentimes we don't understand if I may even bring it into a more spiritual aspect we don't understand why a lot of things happen to us but if we kind of can see there's a lesson I probably can learn from this that's gonna help me be mentally stronger we're gonna view life's obstacles way differently than we already do now now for chapters five through six you should always be prepared for the worst you need to be ready for anything that might happen so it doesn't catch you by surprise but it doesn't mean you need to be overly pessimistic all the time just realistic that does not mean you being prepared now you develop anxiety because oh my goodness I need to be prepared for the zombie apocalypse in case a plane crash on my house in cases now you're thinking of every possibility to the point of anxiety ridden no there's things in life we just cannot control and you just have to accept that okay but being prepared in the sense that no matter what happens I am ready for it kind of like if there's a hurricane like I live in Florida so we get hurricanes a lot and I know it comes yearly so I don't wait for hurricane season to go stock up on water I don't wait on hurricane season to make sure my generator is good I don't wait for a hurricane season to make sure I have non-perishable foods I stack up on those things all the time and if there's a threat of like something going out here since 2020 you have your gas mask you have everything you prepare before everything happened and then sometimes if you know this hurricane is um, projected to be a category five or more even if it's a category because I'm remember we had hurricane charlie it was just a category three for us and it created a lot of damage a lot of damage that was a whole tree inside of my house okay so in instances like that then i won't wait the day before or the day of to drive to a safer location and evacuate i evacuate before then you make plans you have an emergency fund um, making sure you have homeowners insurance you if you're renting an apartment you have renters insurance just being prepared in that sense that's what she means unfortunately we live in in America where in America you don't know when somebody's gonna start bang 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 somewhere you know you don't know when that's gonna happen so you be prepared and in a state like Florida where there's stand your ground and a lot of stuff there's no reason why anyone should not own a weapon or have a license for one and like I told you guys multiple times I've been training with an agent I'm um, making sure that I'm good no matter what <laughs> situation comes I'm not scared of a gun because I'll give you guys that example is a stressful situation for me the first time I went to the gun range it was very very stressful for me and I since got better because the first time I heard a gunshot the first time I let go of one it took me forever to even shoot a gun but the first time I let go of one oh hysterical hysterical it was a lot it's like this can take someone's life it, it just I felt wrong even holding it I can't wait to go to heaven to not have to worry about these type of things but it felt wrong to even hold it and you felt it's a lot it's uh traumatic but I also understood that it will be more traumatic for me to be vulnerable especially you online you don't know there's crazy people out there it will be more dramatic and more traumatic for me to be vulnerable out here and especially in a state like florida it, you, you cannot 
be not knowing what you're doing and not having some security measures in place. You also said know your safe places in case of emergencies. Hospitals are good safe places. Police stations are good. And if you need to get out of a dangerous situation, go to a hospital or police station or even a firehouse and commit the routes to memories and even do that with your kids. How many of you guys right now, I want you guys to comment in the comment section. Do you know where the nearest police station is in your neighborhood? You should know that, that even if you don't have your phone, you know how to get to it without GPS. You should know from your home. If you're going to travel anywhere, you should know where the nearest police station is. Do you know where your nearest fire station is? Do you know where the nearest hospital is from you? Those are things that you need to have your kids commit to memory from their school and on to know where these near stations are that they can run to. You're doing yourself a disservice when you don't have this information. And these public places are safe places to go to in case of danger. It can be difficult to talk to your kids about what to do in case of emergency is you don't want them to become paranoid. You can't always be with your kids, so teach them how to find their way to a safe place. And they're never too young to know. Your kids have more power than either you or they think. Predators are on the lookout for easy prey. The ones who will be quiet and compliant. Give your children the tools and knowledge they need to defend themselves. People who want to hurt you are looking for easy targets. If you fight back, you'll be harder to hurt. Yell, scream, kick, or bite to call attention to yourself in the loudest ways possible. In my first apartment, I had this um, keys thing attached to my key that once you pull it, it makes the most piercing sound. You know that no matter where I'm at, I pull it, people will be definitely hearing. And attached to it is a mace. And I have like other things on me that I was always made sure because it was my first time living alone I was not going to be vulnerable teach your kids to yell and scream to not take things from strangers those same rules that we learn in elementary you guys need to teach your kids this and not underestimate that when you're in transit you're at most vulnerable especially if you stay in New York City and you're taking the subway so when you're walking to your car keep your head on the swivel and look around stay aware of your surroundings when traveling to a foreign country especially one that is unstable stable have a checklist of precautions you need to remember check for travel advisories before going don't just say i want to go to colombia we were trying to go to colombia for one of my really good friends birthdays and i was like let me check the advisory first for that year and when i checked it was not it okay there was like no we do not recommend anyone to travel to this place right now and because of that was like hey let's save that for another time let's go there first check the advisories for each country that you want to visit because sometimes there could be a political unrest that's going on or it could be an issue like i believe france um paris was dealing with a rat issue recently i'm not sure if they're still dealing with it where when i was in france last year um we went around december of 2022 and the hotel that we were saying that is a five-star hotel brand new hotel that had just opened and the first day we got there I already wanted to get out and go to another hotel because it smelled horrible because they had a sewer issue and the smell came through the showers and the hotel was offering us water when I'm looking through I call um, American Express to try to book us another hotel immediately I went to look at the hotels in the area everybody was having the same issue everybody was having it the same issue and even the front desk was telling us it's the area that we have a sewer issue they're trying to work on it etc and had I known that 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 was an issue I probably wouldn't have stayed exactly in in Paris I probably would have went to I don't know another section of Paris or whatever that specific place because they were doing that so those are safety things because now we couldn't even drink water or brush our teeth or shower for the first two to three days that we were there it was terrible you know but check those things um because safety is not just criminals trying to harm you but it's your health also I wish I did my research in terms of that but I thought hey you're going to Paris you're going to Champs-Élysées you're not expecting any of this but yeah that's an issue and then now I think they have a, a rap problem and not to say anything about <laughs> Paris or France I love my French yeah I'm gonna be there almost every year I'll be going back um I loved it nonetheless it was a great experience but these are things that you have to look forward because safety is just not a security threat but also medical and it's also biochemical and also use reputable travel agencies and concierge if you're going to um, book something don't book from shady sites we've seen how many people get kidnapped in different countries things happen um, how many travel stories I watch true crimes I usually like to book my stuff my activities with either the hotel 
or whatever company I booked my like usually you have a concierge like there's there's certain credit cards you get for travel um, especially for American Express even Chase has them um, you get like the Freedom Unlimited or whatever or you get American Express uh, they have a concierge for American Express that will book everything for you the activities that will make sure you good or you go to the hotel you book with them directly making sure that you're not booking through parties that um, may be shady or have you know you, you can't trust them you just go on online anybody can put an ad out online they can pay for that space and then you know you're going to another country you sure you want to trust that always book through reputable traveling agencies that have reviews that you've seen other people use you can look them up online and also leave your valuables and expensive jewelry at home and keep the cash low because pocket picking tours and you can go to the what you think is the most safest place and people steal from you they will steal from you okay like Paris like I said was notorious for that so when we traveled I barely had anything on me okay barely had anything on me I don't recommend traveling with large wads of cash or a strong amount of cash your social and all of those things leave certain things at home and don't ever wear anything that's so flashy especially when you're traveling that calls attention to yourself try to look as much as a tourist as possible know the nearest hospitals wherever you're traveling to and know the emergency service number in the area not everything is not 911. You can't go to Italy and press 911 for emergency. It's ridiculous. Okay. Know the cultures and the law of your destination, especially if you're American. They like to call us entitled because I'm a Haitian American. I consider myself American when I travel too. You know, I'm, I'm American. So I'm both. I'm a citizen here. So um, there's this misconception that we don't obey the laws of the lands of other people and we don't have no regards for that. And I don't want that for you. So before you go, like I have playlist for there's a place I'm going. <laughs> um this summer in june that i'm so excited about i will do vlogs i keep saying i'm gonna do i'm gonna do a whole another channel for vlogs for you guys because i still haven't done my paris vlog or my hawaii vlog or anything like that but before i go i make a playlist to watch every vlog that's been there the history of the country the the not just the history how were they founded what are the people like what are mannerisms what is deemed respectful what is deemed disrespectful because that can mean a lot and knowing their body language is different in different countries countries and how they interact is different in different countries like here in America when you talk to someone if you don't look at them in the eye they deem you as you're lying but in Haiti it's very disrespectful to look someone who's older than you or who's deemed your superior in the eye so I've never been the type to talk to someone and just look at them dead in their eye but I had to learn in America that that is rude to constantly dodge eye contact. You look shifty and you look like you're lying. So I had to work on that. But in different cultures, there's different rules that just won't apply. Take a travel buddy with you if you can. I know it's glamorized and popular to do solo traveling. I'm not trying to make anyone be in fear or tell them not to. Someone like me can't travel solo, okay? I know it's glamorized to travel solo and I'm not gonna make anybody scared, but it's always better to have a travel buddy. It's always better to have an extra pair of eyes, okay? It, it's If you don't, then okay. Okay, if you're gonna travel solo there's just a lot more precautions that you're gonna have to take but have a travel buddy don't ever be like seven and make sure it's a good friend not like the Shinquella case you know not some fake friends but make sure it's a good friend some uh, people that's reliable that's going to be with you that's good vibes that you feel safe around not people that you just met and also i if you're going to travel solo there's a lot of people that travel solo and then they try to make friends with people at the hotel do you know how many predators come to hotels to make friends and they'll come in groups to get you comfortable come drink with us come party with us and then now you're going out to dinner with them etc and you're partying with them that happens okay so be weary of that and learn some some things when you are traveling by yourself also have situational awareness knowing how to read vibes trusting your gut if you're somewhere and you're like mm, this don't feel right don't second guess don't be like oh, i'm tripping and then stay no trust your gut trust your gut have situational awareness be aware don't be out here friendly friendly in people face be no like don't be because when you're a tourist people know they'll try to come sell you stuff Born to train for combat and know what you are capable of your first fight should never be with a real attack her, but with someone some friendly person who will help you figure out your strategies strengths and limitations this is for people that are serious take kickboxing classes take a self-defense class um there's a lot of cheaper options and even if you can't afford here on youtube watch some videos they do trainings here too there's so many free options you don't have to pay people for sometimes too okay but your first fight you should not learn is with an attacker you should know the more prepared you are the more 
quick you are able to act the more second nature it becomes like if you never you just have a gun here you have a gun license but you don't go polish your skills and go to the gun range just like a lot of cops you'll see they go to the gun range frequently why is that they know i have to keep staying polished and shoot in case i'm ever in danger i'm not like <sighs> She said to bulletproof your home, make sure it has a lot of lighting, which deters intruders around your house, even the back. A lot of people will put lighting just in the front of their home, but around the corners in the back, there's no lighting. There has to be lighting and there's these solar lights that will um, get energy from the sun during the day and then light up at night. Have your house well lit. I'm not saying to have big, bold fashion lights, but your house is so well lit that visibly anyone looking out their window can see who's coming. A thief, a person that wants to do you harm doesn't like attention on them. They want to go to the house that's the most vulnerable, that's the least well lit, right? Have a dog, have a dog. Um, have your beware of dog sign, you know, have a dog. They serve as alarm systems also, have alarm systems, have ring alarms, have cameras in every area. Some people just have cameras on their front doors, but they won't have cameras on their back doors or the side, etc. No, put them all around. And even in your bigger areas, like your living room, it's good to have cameras in your living room like you don't have to put them in your bathroom or your bedroom etc and if you have little babies of course you have your nanny cams in the house etc but imagine you're in your room you hear a noise now you can spot exactly where the intruder is if you have cameras in your living room also from your room you can already know and you can kind of prepare yourself you know what's going on and etc keep the area around your home clean like the outside bushes trim them make sure you don't have high bushes people can hide around or whatever but trim them so that you can see that there's no blocking there's nowhere for them to hide basically if they're trying to do sinister things before chapters 11 to 12 she talks about body language and she says body language is an important part of every conversation communicating with someone in person as opposed to over the phone gives us much more information to help us understand what the person is really saying or thinking never have serious conversations over the phone guys if you really want to know the truth never have conversations on the phone meet with the person see them face to face that way you can read them you can um get their vibes because on the over the phone it's easy to uh manipulate you don't put people in a box you shouldn't make assumptions about how people will behave in a certain situation because there's no one way that people behave always be on the lookout for unusual signs someone like evie cannot take what she knows about body language to every country right europeans in terms of like the french and uh italians even they're very in your face they're very animated expressive speaking dramatics and mwah, 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 mwah. you know what i mean so we're not like that here we're very up uh, you too close what you staring at you know somebody staring at you could be and even in the same culture there's subcultures right so even in america there's subcultures there's black america where we yeah we're not all a monolith but we have our own culture and not all black americans even within the subculture there's a subculture so <laughs> it's funny because even in black america there's probably four different sectors of black america if i break that down there's the hood but then there's the suburban um black america and there's the black america the immigrant section whether you're nigerian haitian uh, you Jamaican wherever you are the immigrants we have a whole other way and each of them have a but we all in a sense make black America when we're in America and you can't go to a Jamaican American and assume that they will behave like a Haitian American or like a middle class black American or a, a upper class black American just like in white America I know I shouldn't use race that's probably gonna be so controversial in the comments because you guys give me headaches I'll be acting like I don't understand what I'm saying but it's just like with white America there's different classes there's different groups of people and they behave different like the south in the south we're not gonna behave like people up north do as a southern I as a southern male I say <laughs> I do like not uh, the north is not for me it's not for me it's not for me I know y'all give the the south a lot of flack but New York oh y'all rude y'all rude I went to Chicago no offense to any of my Chicagoans but it was the worst experience of my life <laughs> I just was not expecting the rawness and say what you want about Florida they're always talking trash about Florida right in the south there's southern hospitality there is such a thing we're very big on that where people will smile at you greet you and so whatever but New York is so what's up like you know like you can't look at people everybody's walking so fast they bump into you they don't even turn around to say pardon me 
<laughs> Here in Florida, you bump into some. Pardon me. It's okay. No worries. It ain't nothing but a chicken wing. <laughs> but not in New York. It's like they step on you. They bump you. Let You know what I mean? It's a whole different subculture. So I can't take someone from New York and be like, oh, they're a sour person. It's not that. It's like, they have to be like, that's some sweethearts. But they can't be walking around smiling because they make themselves a target. Like the woman will tell you, I have a friend who moved down here during the panoramic. She moved down here to Florida and she'll tell you that she does not smile on the subway like in New York she doesn't smile out in public because she's like you become an easy target in Florida it's so different everybody's more more smiling but that's a, a different subculture the dialect is different and depending on states states have different cultures right so you got to think of that when you travel Floridians are different than people from Georgia from Georgia are different from people in Washington DC in the DMV and they're different from people in North Carolina they're different from people in in Jersey you know what I mean everybody has their subcultures so you have to understand what that culture is and even in Haiti I'll say that the countryside of Haiti is is so chill there's nothing going on but then you go to Port-au-Prince it's busy 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 everybody da, 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 da. you know what I mean so it's it's a whole different vibe so you have to know the vibe comment below where you from what's the vibe what's the subcultures within your subculture understand that also leave room for error you can't judge everyone based off of just one understanding of the knowledge it's about how to build an impression and influence people and making sure that they know that you care she says when you are at a meeting with someone be fully present turn off your phone the phone is not there to take your attention away from the person you are talking to where we talk about this on how to win friends and influence people check out that book also i'll put it in the links in the comments which i will keep saying that book is bible on how to influence others but she gives very good tips and she even mentioned him in the book also so here's the last chapters which is 21 to 23 where i'm talking about that in the next video and in the art of negotiation i talk about that you guys should just if you're new here we talk about so much it's truly about leveling up so go check out all those videos i go in depth okay so you you will not want to miss but she talks about priming and setting the mood or scene um to influence the situation this is the influencing the situation part which is also on how to win friends and influence others the lighting in the room for example will affect your mood if the lights are bright your mood is enhanced while dimmer lighting will cause you to be less stimulated which is why at restaurants they dim the lights at those luxury nice restaurants right they dim the lights it's more intimate it's more they want you to relax they want you to you know get in the mood with whoever you're talking to and just relax you don't want to talk to somebody you're about to influence and have bright lights so whatever which excites their mood you want them to hear you and be less stimulated and more focused so the dimmer the light the more focused there will be you have a choice you can be ruled by fear or you can be ruled by your inner strength embrace your bulletproof life and be the hero you are this was my one of my favorites because there's so many other videos that i'm going to do just based on this book i would love to meet evie pomporis one day you deserve all your coins buy the book the audio book etc i just love how she shared this knowledge freely and you can tell the compassion she really wants you guys all of us to be safe and to take care of ourselves she loves what she's doing she's passionate about it she even loved her subjects that she was in charge of protecting she spoke so highly of them there's a whole section in the book and um in the podcast not podcast i'm sorry the audible where she was just telling you what she learned from michelle obama what she learned from hillary and what she learned from bill clinton and bushes and she spoke so highly of them and i like that because some people would have wrote a book and went to spill secrets to be salacious and sell books but guess what she is selling these books without doing that and i can appreciate that but comment below your thoughts if you haven't gotten the book yet purchase that if you haven't gotten audible you know what i need to stop promoting audible because this is not sponsored i'm getting no coins <laughs> But I love Audible and Insta Read. Also, if you guys download the app, they also if if you don't need to get Audible, if you download Insta Read because you can get the full audiobook also. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for tuning in. Comment below what other books you guys would like. Until next time. Mwah.